In the last video, I explained how and where and why we would want to ever draw indifference curves. In this video, I want to give a little bit more detail about indifference curves and how we work with them. Specifically, I want to think about the slope of this indifference curve at any given point. Uh, specifically, I want to think about the slope at point A. Now, you'll notice that this indifference curve is, well, it's curved, just as the as the name says it is, it's an indifference curve. And so finding the slope at any point on here would involve a bit of calculus. If you know some calculus, there's another video where I do it in a much more mathy way. In this video, I'm going to be looking at more approximations to the slope, rather just a secant line, based namely the line between A and D. So if we want to think about uh, what the slope is of this indifference curve, all we do is rise over run. That's going to be the slope. You'll notice that the way I've drawn this, the run is 1, and the rise is actually a fall of 2, and so the slope here between A and D, of this line that connects A and D, well that slope will equal negative 2 over 1, rise over run. A lot of the concepts that we'll be dealing with in this segment of the course will be negative, and so what we'll do is we'll just make this positive, think about the magnitude of the slope, and we will call that the marginal rate of substitution. Now the marginal rate of substitution has this interpretation that if I want to make a consumer just as well off, i.e. indifferent, and I want to give that consumer one more unit of the x-axis variable, in this case one more unit of taste, how many units of the y variable can I take away from that person? That answer to that question is the marginal rate of substitution, and in this case the marginal rate of substitution well, is just the negative of the slope, it's 2. So how can we, in terms of some, some other uh, ways of thinking about the problem, get an idea of what the marginal rate of substitution is? Now let's, uh, one way to do that is to define this related concept, which is that of marginal utility. Now marginal utility tells me how much additional utility I get if I get one more unit of a particular good. And actually I can't just say marginal utility. To say marginal utility of what? In this case, I'm going to define it in terms of marginal utility of taste. In other words, how much more utility do I get if I get one more unit of taste? So if we think about that, what we need to know is we need to know something about this indifference curve. Notice that I'm labeling how much utility there is on these indifference curves. Now notice the difference between bundle A and bundle B. The only difference between those two bundles is that you have one more unit of taste at bundle B than you do at bundle A. Therefore, we can think about what the marginal utility of taste is at A. Because at A, if I give this consumer one more unit of taste, how much more utility does he have? Well, it goes from 10 to 12, and the marginal utility, we'll abbreviate that MU, of taste, will equal 12 minus 10, that will equal 2. We can do an example of the marginal utility of health. And in this case, let's do the example starting from bundle B and going down to bundle so C. So what is the marginal utility at C? of health. So, again, thinking about marginal utility, if I give this consumer one more unit of health at bundle C, the only difference between bundle C and bundle B, again, is that there's one more unit of health in bundle B than there is in bundle C, they have the same amount of taste, and so the marginal utility is the difference in utilities there. So the marginal utility of health equals, well, the difference is 12 minus 11. 
And so our marginal utility of health equals 1. Because our utility is 1 more when we have 1 more unit of health. Now you can kind of see, and this is really, really fudging the argument, but it gets at the essence of what the argument would be if we did it rigorously with calculus. You can see that if we go ahead and look at uh, how to get from point A to point B, we can establish a utility equation here. Now, to get from point A to point D, there are two ways to get there. We can just go along the indifference curve. And the change in utility going along that indifference curve is going to be zero. Now we can also go from point A to point B to point C to point D. So how about we try that? It goes up by the marginal utility of taste. You can go from point B to point C and point C to point D, but you'll notice that that is the slope times the slope times the marginal utility of health. If you go ahead and solve for the slope, you can do your algebra and everything, and the slope will equal a negative marginal utility taste over marginal utility of health. Or, more generally, remember that the slope is the negative marginal rate of substitution. This gives us an equation for marginal rate of substitution. If I call this variable the x variable, and this variable the y variable, this means that marginal rate of substitution is the marginal utility of x over marginal utility of y. Now for a more calculus based way of doing this, if you know calculus it might actually even make more sense in this argument. Um, you can go ahead and see my other video. Um, but that tells you uh, that we have two ways of thinking about this marginal rate of substitution. One, it's the slope of the indifference curve at the point that we're thinking about. And two, it is the ratio of these marginal utilities. We'll want to be able to interpret these marginal utilities, and we'll want to be able to say some things about them in our economic theory. Um, but uh, we'll have access to something like a marginal rate of substitution. And so this equation will actually turn out to be very important. So try to understand it. Try to remember it. Uh, it will be, it'll turn out to be very important in understanding consumer behavior. And now we have a sense for a marginal rate of substitution.